Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about one-on-ones, so let's get into it. So the question in question was, Frederick, how do you have, how do you have effective one-on-ones with your manager every week and avoid digging into tactical stuff in these meetings? I don't have weekly meetings with my manager. I'm lucky if I get uh, to have a ma- have one of those meetings once a month, maybe. Well, it depends on the manager. It depends on, like, my specific manager has a lot of people. Uh, but uh, I have other people who I have, like, weekly sync-ups and so forth with. Um, but the... Uh, the way that I usually think about these meetings is has more to do with overall goals as opposed of trying to avoid uh, what you call tactical stuff because to me it, like the tactical skills if that is the thing that is most relevant then this is the thing that we're going to talk about the reality I've found is uh, which is sort of the the lie that a lot of people uh, tell themselves about their managers and the managers in turn usually tell themselves as well is that their one-to-ones is going to have some type of meaningful and significant impact on your career progress. The time that that is true is if they are the right person and you are the right person and that is a big if. Basically what I'm saying is that if the vast majority of managers have no idea how to develop you as a software developer on average and that has more to do with the fact that they're ultimately ignorant of you at an individual level usually like what you like what your interests and so forth are because they take some time to build those sorts of relationship but it's also the other factor is that even if they fix that they don't actually know themselves enough about software engineering and they don't know usually not they don't know enough about your work to be able to guide you uh, like uh, from an, with an outside perspective usually. Uh, the thing that can happen on the other hand, which is very useful, is if you have an idea on of like how do you want to continue develop and then you can have a conversation about that with your manager. But that requires you to sort of have that self-reflection in of, uh, yourself. Uh, it's very unlikely I find that an, a manager will able, be able to just spot and say you should be doing this or you should be doing that because they're simply not involved at that level and they lack, as I said, the technical knowledge usually to be able to identify this, these sorts of things. It's not always the case but I would go as far as to say that it's the norm. So what then happens is ultimately that they take on the position of a listener or someone who's trying to have a conversation with you so that you will sort of unburden yourself or like talk to them about the things that matter to you and on if if they're a good manager they're going to spend the primary amount of time to just build comfort with you so that you can have an honest conversation about things and so if you then on the other hand start talking about like tactical stuff and so forth Mm -hmm. That's usually when you start to dive into that. So for you, it really comes down to what do you want those ones and ones to be about. That's at least how it should work, because it's time that the manager is setting up to have with you for your benefit. Is uh, usually that is the sentiment at the very least. So for you to avoid it is actually very simple. You just have to have something more important to talk about. And if the only thing that you can muster out to talk about with your manager is work related or tactical stuff, then either that is the most important thing or you you don't have uh, you haven't acquired the necessary soft skills to have a conversation with, or like you don't have a relationship or you can call it soft skills, you can call it whatever you want. You don't have the platform necessary to have this conversation with your manager, which brings me back to are the is this the right person? Or is it not the right person? It's the same thing I tell my uh, friends who, ha- who are trying to teach their kids this and that, where we all often have conversations about whether or not like the the, the soul crushing part for some, especially the dads, uh, where you might have a child who wants to do something that you may or may not approve of or so forth. It's not really because it's something wrong. It's simply the case that you don't you're not really an expert in this or it's something that you don't enjoy etc etc so it's hard for you to create a relationship around the thing 
and so you have to sort of ask yourself uh, ask yourself am i able to dis to make my uh, distance myself from injecting my own personality my own value system into the child's environment and actually disrupting the child's growth and development in something that they love doing an example would be if like I have had friends who have had issues with uh, you know connecting in a meaningful way with their more sensitive daughters mm -hmm. And like because of course they they have for them it's easier to connect with the, the they have other uh, other kids who are more sports interested etc cetera, etc cetera. and I go yeah that's great that you have that in interest but your daughter who is more sensitively inclined will pick up on the fact that you are spending a disproper this like a, they they will make, they will feel the difference and so. The question and the, the the dangerous part here is that if you neglect the growth of this uh, of uh, of this girl uh, in an er area where she is very likely to thrive, it's actually just a dam. It's actually just going to damage her. And although you may not be the right person to help guide her and grow her in that arena, it's a question of are you going to let that stop? Her growth, or are you going to see if you can find someone who can help you with that? Now, in a professional in a professional environment, you can't just say to your manager, "Yeah, I like we are not really getting anywhere here." And I've had these sorts of conversations, guys. I've sit, I've had managers who are in their early twenties, uh, and I'm, at, you know, they, they've basically gone from being a junior-ish sort of software developer to becoming a manager, where like they, they have no chance in hell to provide any meaningful feedback on like improving my work etc etc they can we can have conversations and they can give me guidance on like how, how things are going etc etc but when it comes to sharing life experience it's not so likely and i have other co-workers who have like they've been in the industry for 20 years there's no chance in hell that there's going to be an engineering manager out there who's going to be able to tell them yeah you should learn this and that and that because they they, they are at a point where they are more senior and more advanced in the industry than the manager themselves so a lot of what your one-to-ones are going to be about comes ultimately down to what you, how well do you know yourself and how comfortable are you in having a conversation with the manager and if you you want your and one one on ones to be about something more than a little bit of cold talk which it can be can just be cold talk like you sit there, or small talk uh, that's the term right you simply talk about this and that which anybody can sustain you're not going to get you know that's not going to lead to perhaps all that much more but it's something that you do uh, if you want more than that, then it's very likely that you're going to have to come up with your own ideas on what is a priority to you and then bring it up with your manager because it's, as I said, unlikely that you're going to find some type of magic combination where your manager is going to be looking at one part is that they're going to have the time to get to know you really well and also have the seniority experience mentorship all of this like, all the stars have to align in order for you to find a mentor type of figure in your manager and that those one-on-ones are going to be sufficient enough for you to make meaningful progress on your career it's basically down to you is what i'm saying so what i want you to take away from this is that the way that i usually deal with my one-to-ones with my manager is that it, it really must it's it's really down to who am i dealing with so an example would be if i have a manager that i know this is a good person i can have really useful good conversations with them then i establish rapport with them and i usually prioritize talking about the things that are of significance to me because I have a fairly good understanding of what I want to talk to my manager about. It's not, I don't wait for them to give me feedback. It's great if they have it, but I also have my own ideas of what, what's the next step, what should we be doing, what are my questions, etc., etc. And if, on average, if I'm dealing with a manager who has, uh, like, there's not much that we can connect on and there's not much in terms of experience that they can bestow, then we, are ju we just have a pleasant conversation about, like, the silliest things that you can, like, anything. It can be anything from my hobbies to how things are going, how things are feeling, a lot of feelings, tons of tons of feelings, and so forth. And although that might not be something that, gives me an epiphany on how I can be better at my job or how I can grow as a person it is 
it's a it's a conversation with another human being and hopefully you can get to know each other a little bit and in many cases i actually enjoy just having that conversation with my manager every once in a while uh, because usually i work with pretty good people and so my suggestion to you is that if you want to sort of direct like your one-on-ones and get some as much as possible out of them you should do a lot of thinking about yourself your growth and sort of the things that are important to you and then mention them to your manager because it's very unlikely that they're gonna drop something in your lap and then they're gonna like sort of like they are you can think of them as more of a, a receiver of information and thoughts in these sorts of conversations if you think about it that way and you take the personal responsibility i think you're going to have you you're going to get more benefit from them as opposed to trying to you know uh, put it uh, put things in a state where they need to do something for you without you asking you think of it much more in terms of that you push things they receive things and i mean if they do receive something in terms of feedback they're going to let you know it anyway so the tactical stuff and avoiding conversations about like whatever you want to call that it's actually that simple you just have to have something better to talk about and if you give it to some thought i think you can come up with a few things have a great day